Sup fuckers, today we will be looking at a place, comma, forbidden. And I'm gonna be saying a place, comma, forbidden. Because I just think it's really weird that they put that comma in the title. A place forgiven would have been a good name, but a place, comma, forbidden just seems odd to me. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to knock on the game. I actually love this game. I thought it was a breath of fresh air in the indie dev horror genre gaming bullshit. Lately, too many games that are coming out have just been hide and go seek games where you're trying to find an item at point A, take that item to point B, and that's the puzzle. This game actually has a linear storyline where you progress throughout the game, you learn more and more about the backstory of the characters, and then you complete it and it's just beautiful, it's well done, and I love just about every part of it. So let's start at the beginning here. Your character awakens in a library, which you find out later is called the Oroboros Library. I think I got that right on the pronunciation. I've heard it pronounced a bunch of different ways. I've listened to like 10 YouTube videos on how to say it and I keep fucking it up anyway, so we're gonna go with the Oroboros. And right off the bat, we see the most unrealistic thing about this game is that there's somebody in a library in 2020. I don't think anyone goes to the library. I'm actually questioning if a lot of people even know how to read anymore. But I digress. As you move throughout the library, which consists of a few short hallways and three main areas. One is the entryway, one is the library itself where all the books are located, and the other one seems to be kind of an office slash checkout area slash maybe a private study area. You notice things don't seem to be quite right. Your first hint, aside from just waking up in a library with no idea how you got there, is a cell phone ringing in the distance. Upon answering the cell phone, you realize the call is restricted. The dreaded telemarketer phone call. Just kidding, it's actually a satanic presence known as the librarian. And Sutton just feels good about saying that the main villain is a librarian. You know, you see them throughout school, when you get to high school, when you get to college, and they're, they're always kind of mysterious. You know, you don't talk to them, they don't talk to you, they're just there. In any movie where I could see a serial killer being in a school, I would always, always assume it's a librarian. And you know what? I think I'm fucking right. But once again, I digress. After answering the cell phone, you get told that the library is closing soon, you should fuck off, and lock the doors on your way out. Which is strange, because I feel like they don't tell people in the library to, you know, lock up on their way out, but eh, what are you gonna do? It's a horror game, when a demon tells you to lock up, you fucking lock the doors. But you, being that little rebel and all say fuck that, you're staying in the library. You got puzzles to do, and the very first puzzle that I came across was cleaning up the garbage. You gotta pick up garbage throughout the room, throw it in the garbage can. Which isn't actually, as far as I can tell, part of the main story. I think it's actually part of a side quest you have to do, which I'll explain later on throughout the game. There are uh, five side quests, I believe. Yeah, five pages to a journal that you have on your own that are encrypted in some kind of secret language that provide five clues in five different rooms to five puzzles you have to solve to get a certain tome of knowledge. That's not what it's called. I can't remember what it's called, but I'm going to call it the tome of knowledge, uh, <laughs> which lets you translate the encrypted parts of the text and that will give you what i'm assuming is a secret ending i didn't get the secret ending because i fucked up pretty much halfway through and couldn't figure it out so i just got the normal boring ass ending so for the most part i just want to give like the tldr of each area you're going to encounter throughout the game i don't want to spoil too much i don't want to give away any of the uh the puzzles how to complete them i just want to show you what you're in for now the first area is pretty obvious you wake up you're in a normal library. You get a normal phone call, no big deal, nothing crazy. And I do want to point out that there's a globe you can spin. And you, the more you click, the faster the globe goes. And I was really disappointed that the devs did not make it so I could spin the globe so fast that it broke. I don't know why, but it just bugged the shit out of me. Now, once you do the fairly basic puzzle of the first area, you move through a room which you think will progress you farther throughout the building, but you actually find yourself in the same library. This time, slightly different. And that's pretty much the theme of the whole game. Do a puzzle gets crazier as you go. This second area is pretty much the same as the first. It looks almost like it's been ransacked a bit. Uh, a few of the shelves are moved, a few computers are unplugged, but for the most part it's still the same thing. Nothing's gotten too crazy. Yet. After completing the puzzle in the second room is where shit really goes down. Once you reach, uh, I guess what I'll call the third phase of the game, 
is where it starts to take on more of a demonic tone. You see stretched out ceilings, more security cameras watching you, eyeballs, rivers of blood, and from then on it just goes more and more downhill or uphill depending on how you want to look at it. The puzzles, for the most part, stay the same. You search around for some clues, you read a couple books, they give you a few hints, and then you have to kind of try to figure out the puzzle on your own. None of them are too difficult. The only thing I found in this game that was really difficult is when you get to the later stages, there's portals that you gotta fall through or walk through that teleport you to different places. At the beginning, I had a big problem with these portals. I couldn't remember which portal took me where, to do what, or what puzzle I had to solve in each portal until I realized, and this is kind of a spoiler, if you care, if you don't, you know, continue watching. If you look around the borders of each portal, it shows you where you will go. For instance, there's one portal that takes you to a room that's all upside down. You get to a chessboard, you flip it over, and then the room becomes right side up. Now, if you look at the entrance to that portal, you'll see little chess pieces around. So you gotta pay attention to the small details throughout this game, and not just at this point, but from start to finish, there's little nuances that are really amazing. Before I get into the technical aspects of the game, I kinda wanna give an overview of what I think is happening. I believe that this library is some kind of either immortal plane where you can live forever, or it's an area of infinite knowledge where people come, they solve the riddles, they try to survive, and if they can actually manage to make it through all the puzzles of the librarian, they can gain infinite knowledge or immortal life through all the books. You find out later, and this is a spoiler, that a lot of the books that are laying around are more like diaries, and they are actually written by the people that have come here before you and have failed to complete the librarian's tasks. So that's what leads me to believe that you come here on a journey, maybe you activate something or do something, and it brings you here, and then you, you forget why you came here, and it just tests your metal to see if you're able to complete it, and you're greatly rewarded if you can. So anyways, let's talk about some of the technical aspects of the game. Not a whole lot to say in this area. The controls are fine. You, you move a little slowly, but you know, you're walking through a library, so you're not expected to be running and cruising, and I don't mind the slow pacing because it really works well with the game. The lighting is amazing. Most horror games fuck this up so terribly where they try to make it so dark that you cannot see anything. You can't see the background. You can barely see what's around you. You can only see what's right in front of your flashlight. But what I noticed for most of this game, you could shut off your flashlight and still actually be able to play the game just fine, which is just fucking great. As for glitches and bugs and things like that, I did notice, uh, a few of the places there was typos. Uh, the one that I recognize the most is, I think it says, uh, bash your head against the wall is what it meant to say, but it actually says dash your head against the wall. There was a few other points where there was little things. My main gripe, the main thing that bugged me the most out of this game was the font did not match the feel of the game at all. You have an old PlayStation 1 kind of old school retro horror game, but the font kind of just looks like Times New Roman. It stands out. All the books, all the dialogue, the subtitles, all that stuff, it really stands out. The voice acting was great. There was a few times where it was a little shoddy, but for the most part it was amazing. But Jesus, that font, fuck man, was just way off the mark. There's a lot more I could say about the game, but honestly it would just be either giving away the story or giving away how the puzzles are done. But it's a free game, so I'd say go check it out and, you know, have yourself a good day.